subtract. He doesn't add. He multiplies. So every suffering thing we've been through this year, we can look for him to multiply our blessings on next year. It's no need of making New Year's resolutions that we're not going to keep. Let's be real. Everybody make that New Year's resolution. I'm going to lose 50 pounds. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. And we be eating donuts on the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 5th of January. Don't call for me. I be little sis. I ain't come for you. I ain't come for you. But she will be having a powdered face on the 1st, 5th, and 10th of January. And we make these promises and we don't realize that they're actually affirmations and we're putting something on our life and when we don't follow through with it, we're causing damage because we made a promise to God. So before you sit up and say what you're gonna do, how you're gonna act for this new year, new year, new me, no. In order to get a new you, you have to let go of what you've had for this entire year. Yes, we're going to have praise and worship by Red. And the <laughs> Divine Worship Assembly, praise him. Amen. Amen. Check out them shoes, y'all. I don't care what y'all say. She matches too. Yes. Look at it. Oh, work it. Go ahead, work it. Hey, 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 hey. Yes from God. He want to hear yes from you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
coming from 1 John 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he is that in the world. enough to give God praise, honor, and glory for. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory. My, my, my. God is good. God is good. God is good. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Y'all sitting down on y'all seat to do nothing. When God has been good, he's been faithful to keep us here yet another day. We get ready to go out of 2020 and end end of 2021. We need to enter, we need to go out with a praise and enter with a praise. Amen. I got a treat. I got a treat. I got a treat. The word gonna be good too. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good. Cause I got some help this morning, y'all. I got some help. I woke up not feeling good, but I said, hey, you know what? It was already on my heart to get somebody to speak, but I'm going to get two somebody to give us a little something, what the Lord has given them. So I'm going to uh, call up Lady Miles, Lady Bobby, and let her. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, y'all so dry. Praise the Lord, everyone. Okay. This was a shock. But they say, be ye y'all so ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you some words of encouragement. As we leave 2020 and head into 2021, um, I had a, a friend come in the store one day and their shirt says, together everyone achieves more. And we've been talking about the newness and the rebirth of the ministry and where we're wanting to go. And we've had meetings and, and talked and had all these wonderful ideas. But when you work together instead of against each other, you can achieve much more. I don't know if you remember the sermon that I had where I had Sister Katrina on one end of the rope and then I had myself as well as others on the other end of the rope. Everyone's played tug of war in their life at some point. And when you're in a tug of war, nobody really wins. Y'all didn't catch it. When you're in a tug of war, nobody really wins. You might get across the threshold. You gonna fall, cause you done had to use all your energy to pull to get across that threshold. Then on the other side, everybody falls because they were trying to pull you down too. So in this season that we're entering, I want us to not tug a war. 
We gonna all be on the same line, pulling the same way for God, for the ministry, for the vision. We have entrepreneurs in our, in our ministry. There is no reason why no one is not supporting another one. My grandfather used to drink coffee every morning and he would always put a saucer up under his cup of coffee and I never understood why and I asked him one day, I said, Papa, why you fill your coffee cup up like that? He said, because I want it all. And it was later on in life that I realized what I wanted all meant. He wanted the overflow plus what was already there. So when you got your saucer and your position is right, your overflow is going to go where? Hello? Talk to me. Come on, you. Y'all ain't been in. Y'all, this is not virtual school. We're together. Okay. When it overflows and pours into you, what happens? It overflows into the saucer. And sometimes the saucer is the hand of your brother or your sister. So they receive the overflow. So you can't be stingy and be like, I'm going to drink it all. I'm going to drink it all. My girl's got a habit of drinking everything but the corner of the Kool-Aid. And they always say, somebody going to love this corner. Somebody going to love it. It's not even enough to cover the bottom of the cup. But they always say, somebody going to love this corner. And if you think about it, sometimes all you need is that corner to overflow you to your next person. So when you connect it together and you're on one accord and you connect it to the true vine, your overflow going to help your sister or your brother. Your prayers are going to help your children and your grandchildren and their children because it keeps going. Many of us are still living off grandmama's prayers. Off mama's prayers, off the motherboard that had the candy in the pocketbook that tastes like perfume. Amen. Y'all done had some of that candy that tastes like perfume. But many of us are living off the prayers of those women and those men that prayed and tarried 40, 50 years ago. And we still living off them same prayers. Now it's not a season to stop praying. Now it's a season to pray for overflow. We've been prophesied to in this ministry that we're in a harvest. Had a man come out of the store the other day. He had too many greens and yams in his garden. I received the overflow. And I, my overflow, I shared it with somebody else. So when you get in the overflow, you can't be greedy. God prepares a table before us. And that table is set before us and many sit at the table that shouldn't even be there because we too busy dragging people along that ain't ready to move. In this new season, when you sit at the table, prepare for your overflow, but, but connect to someone that needs a blessing as well. Ms. Masaya. will have you prepare. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord been dealing with me on term. I know y'all getting tired of hearing term, but it's a song. Some people still like term yet, and they wonder why they ain't walking in their season, that overflow in that season because they ain't turned. And all for God to turn some things around for you, you got to turn for him. Amen. In 2 Chronicles uh, uh, 7 and 14, it says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn, uh, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will Will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, Turn. Turn. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and I got to think, like I was saying when I did Bible, Bible study on that Wednesday, I know a lot of you missed it, but we're going to recap it right quick and I'm going to take you into what the Lord is dealing with me now. Amen. Hallelujah. He was saying so many people hollering, COVID, 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 COVID this, COVID that, the new flu this, the new flu that. Amen. But he said, If we turn, and everybody want to say, Lord, have mercy. That's the first thing we want to say. Like Mr. Bobby said, when we used to get drunk, that's the first thing we say. Lord have mercy. When we want him to do something for us, we want to say, Lord have mercy. But when we gonna turn? Amen. When we gonna turn? Apostle gave out a word about people getting some homes, and we looking for those homes. We're looking for those cars. We're looking for that bank account to shoot up. Amen. And we're looking for healing in our bodies, but when we gonna turn? 
Amen. And then just on yesterday, and y'all, I, I, I'm going to connect it. Y'all probably think I'm scared of preaching. I'm not, I promise you I'm going to connect it. I, I, God gave me a word the other day. I had a dream about my son, Melvin, and then he gave me a word, and I gave it to my son. But then I started thinking about the conversation I had with my landlord on yesterday. And the word was for me as well. How many of you know he'll give it to you? But you're supposed to get it before you give it to somebody else. And the word that he gave me was because my son's running from his calling. And he don't mind me calling him out because, you know, well, we, we transparent. But I tell y'all, he know I tell him. But I said, Melvin, I say, uh, in, in, the, in the dream, uh, um, you was running. I say, but the Lord, when I woke up, the Lord put in my spirit that uh, his will is, will not take you where his grace won't keep you. His will, y'all ain't catching that yet. Because a lot of people don't understand they be running, you know. They run. His will will not take you where his grace won't keep you. Amen. Hallelujah. So when I got to thinking about that term, and he was letting me know, uh, Minister Miles, because you chose to turn from that sin and walk with me, I'm about to elevate you and take you higher. You think I didn't receive that? Hallelujah. I thank God for it. I thank God for it. I received that because his grace, his will is not going to take me. I might, Minister Messiah might be a little nervous on where he's getting ready to take me, but I got to understand that his will will not take me where his grace won't keep me because I decided to turn. Hallelujah. I lost some friends along the way because I chose to turn. Amen. Hallelujah. But I ain't worried about it because as long as I got King Jesus on my side, I don't need nobody else because I chose to turn. Y'all be blessed. Okay, now look at y'all. Look at them. Look at them women. They they getting ready to do some things. They getting ready to burst some things. Oh my my my. Ooh. I don't even know what to say now. Mm. We got one more. Who we shall do? You know what? Exactly. Thank you very much, Minister Mush Minister Yoshika Gamble. Uh-huh. See, so y'all don't understand what, what's going to take place. They got, they finna birth some things in that women ministry. Oh, my God. All right. Oh, man. I said tag, it was it. <laughs> I want to pass it to somebody else, but good morning, everybody. Well, I'm not going to preach to you guys. Um, I am going to share something with you all that probably a lot of you all may already know, but some of you don't. The pain and the struggle that you're going on in the inside don't have to play on the outside. You can fool the world, but you can't fool God. I don't know if you all know, I come to church with my smiling face, my makeup on, but it actually is hell at home. But I will not stop praising God for nobody. So when I come in here, I come with my full praise. And to last Sunday, it was so amazing because we could turn something and make it so beautiful on the outside. But we're struggling on the inside. Some of us are so sick and so bound in our minds that we can't even reach out and touch somebody else. But I want to get somebody that courage. Because you're going through don't mean you can't pull somebody else out. See, sometimes when we're down, that's when God is doing his best work. Because he'll lead you down a pathway that's going to save somebody else. You know, and the ones that he chose don't always have it right. Don't always get it right. But they can do right by God. So all you have to do is answer that calling and be obedient to the word of God. And you will get here. Everybody in this ministry can't say that I was perfect. You know, I, I gave a sermon one time and I said, if you a whole raise your hand. My hand went up. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. Oh, what's wrong with her? Who is she calling that? Who is she calling this? I said, well, let me ask you this. How many of you all have slept with a guy and then afterwards, can you pay my light bill? Can I get a couple of dollars? Can you give me some gas money? Can you feed me and the kids? Let's be honest. Let's be real right now. See, some people don't want to be real. Some people don't want to tell their story. But guess what? If you can't be obedient, you can't come out. So only difference between us and a prostitute on the street, she's upfront about her money. She wanted then. She wanted on the table when she done.